Hello, welcome back on the Watches TV and we all know how important Singapore is for watchmaking, not only in terms of the number of serious collectors present there, and I'm not talking one or two, but also as a tourist destination and therefore people buying there in some of the most uh, beautiful boutiques I've seriously seen worldwide. So yes, Singapore is important, but guess what? I had actually never ever been there. So when I got invited to attend a watch fair with some of our small beloved independent watchmakers, some that actually uh, met for the very first time over there, moderate uh, some panel talks, uh, meet some of these collectors, meet people that look at us, create some cool human link. Well, that was the perfect excuse for me uh, to work on my carbon footprint and uh, jump in a plane destination. Here I come. And I have to admit that I really loved it. So today uh, we're bringing you kind of a summary of this uh, great uh, experience, interviews of watchmakers, uh, new faces, different things and experiences, sharing knowledge, as well as a pretty serious uh, watch collection. And one thing I wanted to add, and I think it's pretty relevant uh, when you think of the evolution of uh, watch fairs, well, the exhibitors uh, can actually sell on site. Interesting. <laughs> So you've been working on uh, developing this uh, timepiece for quite a, some time. You've shown it to some people, some lucky collectors and so forth. But this is actually the first time that you're out there showcasing yourself, the brand, the timepiece. How does it feel? Really great. Uh, it's uh, always nice to hear uh, uh, what all the people think uh, about uh, our watch, uh, what they like, what they don't like. I think when we, we tell uh, our story to people, they can understand why we are so traditional. We work for longer, so it's really traditional. We, we work in uh, restoring or servicing uh, vintage or old watches. So that's, I think it makes sense. And uh, you, uh, you started with the deadbeat second. Deadbeat second is something often quite complicated for people to understand. Why did you start with something like this? With the, the, the architect architecture of the movement, it's very easy to, uh, to explain that all the mechanism of the deadbeat second is under one bridge. It's here, it's moving. So it's, it's the first thing you see when you turn, uh, when you turn uh, the watch. So, wait, we, we just need time to explain, but beside that, I think it's okay. <laughs> and does it piss you off when people say, oh, it's a mechanical quartz? No, I, I think it's funny because um, then they can, they can take time to see uh, the, um, the back of the watch. And uh, for us, it's the most uh, interesting part, <laughs> even if you can see when you wear it. <laughs> I, uh, I present uh, my, my new uh, watch um, uh, called uh, Sin, uh, with um, some element turning uh, inside the dial with uh, moon and uh, sun. Inside the sun, the hour end, and of course uh, in the middle, uh, the minute in three dimension. At uh, midnight, we have all the elements uh, on the line perfectly. Uh, it's a uh, house uh, movement and uh, house uh, complication. Uh, for this one, uh, it's uh, very special because uh, we have um, 12 um, index. Um, for this one, uh, uh, 12 uh, petals. Uh, petals are full black uh, when it's uh, midnight and uh, full uh, pink uh, when uh, it's a perfect uh, noon time. And uh, one by one, petals changing the color inside the dial. So a lot of the ladies at SCHH and Basel World were asking for something um, easier to buy, let's say. So Lily was, uh, was designed four years ago and I've been working on it, let's say, part-time. So then we just decided to go with it and uh, have it ready before Christmas. So we decided to bring nine pieces with us and so this is the first time we're showing it. And the watch is a cocktail watch, it's very small, very thin and I wanted to keep it that way. So we needed a very slim movement, very small. So uh, that's why we went with a quartz with the ETA movement, uh, E01, uh, crownless, because there's no crown. So it's a really a jewelry piece. So we're carving our own stones. I go to Tucson every year to buy my stone. That's best week of my year <laughs> and and then we work them in our uh, Montreal workshop 
uh, and we do the, the assembly in Switzerland where all the other components are fabricated. Our manufacturer, the Signa Individual, specializes in working with high-end carbon fiber. So it all began years ago, uh, starting customizing iPhones and then at right now we have another field of customization which are Rolex watches. So what we do is we transform uh, normal traditional Rolex that are meant to be produced for uh, a lot of people, for mass people, like in the mass market. We make them more exclusive, we make them more exclusive and limited as well. So our timepieces, if we talk about our Carbon Daytona series, those are limited to three to ten pieces for each model, depending on which particular model we're talking about. The cases, the bezel, the straps, the dial, or all are, all are in-house produced in our manufacture. Of course, the movement, the 4130, it's the original, reliable, uh, Rolex movement, which uh, combined with what we do at our manufacturer, uh, we made it possible to offer a seven year warranty to our clients, which is two additional years uh, from the normal original warranty. So, carbon fiber it's almost unbeatable, it's very light and unscratchable, so you don't need to wear a case anymore. And what kind of customers uh, are looking into those kind of products? So the, the kind of customers are of course very, very exclusive people, so very open-minded people that are, are not as conservative as most uh, Rolex users. They are open into more artistic designs, so if they want something else in the design, if they want something else in the dial or a different combination of colors, it is possible. And any issues with the big crown? No. <laughs> of course not. Uh, of course, uh, all of our pieces uh, are not held in stock. They are produced only upon request. So those are not pieces you can go to any boutique and get them. If you want them, you'll need to wait. And the production time is about eight weeks. Nelson, can you explain us a little bit the, uh, the, the objective of setting up this fair? So the objective of setting up this fair really is to promote the art of independence and really to showcase the true, true artistry and craft that each of these um, brands have. And we started that since day one in 2017, very humbly for watchmaking with four brands. Um, and the fair will continue to grow now, you know, beyond ACI and it's in 2019 this year, we have seen brands like Artia. Uh, and this is really where we're going, you know, to support these true independent artists, the real artists and craftsmen that, that that creates matter species is beyond the obvious. That's what I like to say, beyond the obvious. Is this something that uh, for uh, Singaporeans is uh, appealing? Uh? Well, Singapore, as you know, it's, it's already a mature watch capital. However much education I feel still has to be done in the space of independent watchmaking. It takes time, it takes education, and it's something that Jewelux is committed to do into the near future and into the long term being the only fair in the world that has been consumer-centric from day one, giving the power back to the consumer and giving the power back really to the watchmakers themselves. Things are changing with the internet as with, uh, with technology and we see that a, a, a new world order is here where it will be both B2B and it will be both B2C and of which the, the owners uh, or the participants would then get to benefit the most when they have both sides of the spectrum. I started about 10 years ago, uh, thanks to an auction exhibition in Singapore, uh, to one of the auction houses. Um, I started to learn about modern watches and start buying them through auctions. But I switched quite quickly into vintage watches, um, again to, because of the auctions. Um, I learned very fast sourcing from all over the world, uh, from collectors, uh, from dealers, auction houses, uh, to try to build uh, quietly uh, my collection uh, that I'm very proud to finally publicly share for the first time. So what kind of uh, timepieces are we talking about? Uh, Patek's focusing on uh, pocket watches, time only, uh, Calatravas, uh, significant Calatravas, um, um, chronographs, um, perpetual calendars, moon phase uh, related watches. So I focus only on quality. Uh, rarity was second uh, for me, so it helped me a lot over the years. As a collector, I don't follow hypes. Um, I don't buy what everybody is buying. 
Uh, I like to buy what I like personally to wear, to look at, to enjoy. Um, I think uh, Patek did much better in marketing than Vacheron, the vintage watches. Uh, and the following, of course, for Patek is much bigger in, uh, in result. Uh, but I believe uh, Vacheron uh, deserves, deserves better following. And coming back to uh, modern watchmaking, uh, do you still have an appeal for modern uh, watches? I think we should respect the independence. Uh, we should respect what they're doing for the market. Uh, the innovation, the new inno innovation in aesthetics and case making and movement is coming from the independence. Um, and I think from, from my perspective is I need to have a few of these uh, watches to combine all of these together. You know, the, their craftsmanship, their knowledge, their hard work. Uh, and also to support, uh, you know, their work. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as we did, uh, being almost on the equator with the nice uh, temperatures that uh, goes along. Plenty of nice green trees went for us here in Geneva. Well, it's already pretty dull and cold. Well, that was uh, quite enjoyable. So we still have one more report regarding our Singapore experience uh, concerning a small uh, brand that was launched actually in Singapore called Adventist. And there are pretty interesting watches to be seen. Nice story, a nice inspiring young chap that you will discover soon. So all the very best. And the next fair for us will be the Dubai Watch Week. Happy uh, to go back to more decent temperatures again. So see you real soon and viva watchmaking! Yeah.